Hello, family, and welcome to another episode of Role Model Makers Experts Cafe. I'm your host, Dr. Elder Parent Whisperer, and today with me, I have an amazing lady, Miss Efrat Shokef. I hope I said that correctly, Efrat. Did I say it correctly? Yes, you did. <laughs> Fantastic. So first win of the day. Very cool. Um, she has been in our community. She's amazing. I love her energy. I love what she stands for, and I wanted her to come and introduce herself to you guys uh, so that you understand what she does. Hopefully, it's not something that's going to catch you by surprise, but you put it on your radar and make sure that it is something that can benefit the family. So, Efrat, thank you for being here, taking time out of your busy day. Actually, I believe it's night over there. Um, and uh, thank you for taking the time to be here. And um, audience members, thank you for tuning in. Efrat, can you tell our parents and parent entrepreneurs that are watching this what you do and how you got involved doing it? And we'll go from there. Okay, allow me to start with a thank you uh, to you, Dr. L, especially for the vision you hold, because when so many of us hold that same vision for all kids all around the world, we basically dream a new reality into being. Uh, so any parent or anybody watching us willing to hold that vision with us, uh, it's a blessing. It's another one, another one. And all kids deserve to reach their possible. So thanks. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I'm a shamanic energy healing practitioner. I'm also a writer. Um, and if I briefly share my story, uh, soon after my three girls were born, I was just uh, finishing my postdoctoral studies, uh, partially funded by Fulbright Scholarship. Uh, I was about to start on an academic track, and then I was involved in a very severe, serious car crash. Um, had to be taken to the hospital in a helicopter, had no time, uh, which threw me on a reorganization of my body. Everything had to be reorganized. Everything had to be relearned. What also happened was that I became absent as a mother. Being a mother to my daughters were, was more important than my career or anything already before what happened. And I was searching for the essence because I was not able to do any of the care. I was unable to do anything. I was partially washing, more absent, absent than uh, uh, present in their lives. And I wanted to know what makes me their mother, even though I was doing nothing. Another thing that happened in the car crash was that I experienced a near-death experience. A near-death experience is always an initiation or an invitation for a change, and I had to embrace that and integrate it together with my new body. And that brought light to what parenting is, what, what parenting is in its essence. So what, what did we promise our children before they chose us, before they came to us as their parents? So it's a long journey that led me also to study shamanic tools. I wanted tools that I can mediate healing with. So I study all kinds of tools, specifically shamanic. And that's what I, I do today. I work with children. I work with parents. I work with family. I lead journey, uh, shamanic journey uh, groups for teens, for parents, teach, uh, mentor, all that spectrum uh, of possibilities. Okay. So what is... The, I guess for our audience members, what is the things that really parents should watch out for and says, oh, you know what? This is an EFRAT case that I need to reach out to EFRAT. Like what would be a red flag or something that they need to watch out for or people that come to you complaining about that is typical that uh, we, we're, we're talking about? Because th there's a lot actually that you do. It's more than just that. So, so tell us about those things. So maybe I should start by saying that uh, people reach out for a very broad spectrum of reasons. Um, it is because uh, they understand as parents that they want to listen to their intuition, to trust their parenting knowings. Uh, it's because they have to get out of the box. It's because their children are not managing well in the system. They can be wonderful at home or have trouble. Um, in the last year, I've been getting a lot of uh, a lot of children that find it hard to ground. Little ones, very very little ones. The parents are complaining. They're floaty. They're not centered. They're not present. They're daydreaming constantly, um, and it's a it's a very interesting phenomenon of souls 
choosing to be here, but then finding the conditions of being here very, very challenging just constantly leaving their body, not being able to be present. So I provide guidance uh, whenever I can guide the parents and not work directly with the children. I prefer that because that guidance does two things. It both provides the child with what they need and it opens up the parents for that energetic, spiritual aspect, soul aspect of the process of what's happening. Red flags. Um, not everything has an energetic reason. We'd like to think there is, but no. But there are a lot of reasons that are energetic. If I think of, if I narrow it for just for now, the two uh, red flags. When you try a lot of things to change a child's behavior, to change the environment at home, uh, to bring about changes, then I would uh, often recommend two directions. One is actually starting with really cleaning their nutrition. Nutrition and spirit are connected once we clean our nutrition, gluten, dairy, all the sugars, all the junk, suddenly our connection opens. And we can listen and know for ourselves, we don't need any experts to come in to our family, which we know our kids chose us and we can do. So um, that's one thing I would do. And when nothing else works, you know, you try, you try everything, you change your nutrition and there's still something going on that is not explainable. I'll give it a reason, uh, an example, sorry. Um, a child doesn't fall asleep at night mm -hmm. and they struggle. And um, and you, you know, you've worked out everything <laughs> around the situation and you go to sleep calmly and you read a nice story and it's not something that brings any fears and maybe you meditate before you go to sleep. The child still doesn't fall asleep. Maybe there is an energetic entity in their bed. Spiritually aware children are like magnets. They're open and all kinds of energies go around. Just whoop, it's like a swallows in it with a big heart. It's not bad energies. It just energies that do not belong to them. And it's so easy to clear that out. Suddenly the kid goes to sleep easily. So the solutions are also very, very simple. On my website, I offer um, an e-course that offers many of those tools for parents to use for themselves. Um, so yeah, red flags would be not managing to explain something. And another red flag is when you see your child uh, behaving as you do, and you know your mom or dad did the same, and maybe somebody else in the family and the grandma. So that's a very clear sign that there is an ancestral heritage uh, controlling the behavior. Hmm. And that is that needs uh, someone that 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 is something that most parents cannot solve for themselves. They need people, people like myself. Energy healing, sound healing, transpersonal psychology. There are many modalities to work with those ancestral um, baggages, and you solve them. It's like magic. So. Cool. Well, yeah. Well, if you want to do it the easy way, this is the way, basically, instead of hard work and therapy and counseling, this is the way. <laughs> yeah, but you need to agree to, right. to accept that your energy right. and that energy does exist. Are you okay with us playing a small game for everyone to understand? Right. You probably know this game, but if you put your hands like one in front of the other, you start playing, you always feel the energy. And uh, if somebody doesn't believe really his energy, just play that game and feel it. There's no argument after Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Cool. Very cool. All right. So what would be, because this is something that requires a little bit of a deeper dive so that people can learn more the specifics of it and kind of familiarize yourself with them, familiarize themselves with it. Uh, but what would be a good way for them to be able to connect with you and uh, ask for more support, resources, and community as well so the best way to communicate with me is through my website it has all my information it's on my name it's e-f-r-a-t-s-h-o-k-e-f.com uh you have my email there are a lot of explanations of shamanic terms energetic terms so people can look around read there's my stories there there are a lot of free guides that you can download and there are some other ones exciting ones coming up um, so people can learn learn the basics start understanding the language and people can also feel free to just email me i don't charge for that i'm sure i try to guide 
uh, just hoping for every spiritually aware child to uh, to be able to walk their beauty as we all want for all children in the world. Fred, I have a question. What was a, a special case or a, a, a circumstance that really touched your heart as far as the results that you got and, and what you were what you saw the transformation? Wow, there's so many touching. Uh, mm -hmm. hmm. I know I shouldn't have asked you that question because if somebody asked me during your practice days, which was your favorite patient, I don't know how to answer. It's not, well, it's, it's a girl that I adore. I'll, I'll give it an example, which is, which will be maybe surprising in its elements. Uh, she suffers from epilepsy and um, amazing family, supportive family. Really, everything is done right. You know, there is nothing to correct in the environment of the, or, or their choice even, they combine conventional medicine with alternative medicine and everything. But we were looking for, for a way to help her stay grounded. I've worked through the various elements and will not get into those details because that is private information. But eventually I got an image of her full, a room full of rocks and plants and the family and community gathered and just filled it through. And it was a, an amazing effect of being Suddenly she slept the whole night because that earth element, which earth, our mother earth. So other energy is not just about floating in heaven, wow. it's being present. It just grounded her, uh, grounded her back. Um, another beautiful case, which is again, might not be the conventional um, that comes up to my gut mind. So I'm gonna trust that. Um, and mom really wanted me to work with her child who is on the spectrum. And once we uh, we met twice, the kid and I, the kid insisted on working with me face to face. It was at the time of COVID, we met outside and we worked. Um, and it was, uh, I think what touched me the most were two things. First, to recognize his soul's journey. And once we could recognize his soul's journey, his mom could accept him in a whole new way. And uh, and then what he said after the second, uh, we finished the second session, he came back with the rocks to work with and knowing how to balance his energy field and all kinds of tools that we taught, I taught him in the session. And at the end he said, okay, now I've done my work, mom. I basically brought you here so you would get on a journey. And I've been working with the mom since, and amazing things are happening. So that is also an interaction often happening. These are really evolved souls, and we, they're in a tiny body dependent, but we need to open up for their invitation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's where so it, starts, walk, it starts with yourself. With us. Right. It starts with us walking our essence. Yeah, maybe maybe that's the most important thing, is understanding that it shows us, and the only thing we can do, we don't know if it's soul's journey. So the only thing we can do is walk our soul journey and own our things, work, heal, do what we can do. And then we provide, we stand and show up as a parent that they, they chose to come to. Right. Okay. So uh, first of all, audience members, I want to make sure that you go to the description box of this video and check the details that Efrat has provided and the contact information. Uh, she is very heart-centered. You definitely want to make sure that you connect with her. And in the process, also role model the behavior that it's okay for us to connect to people who are well-intentioned, who have an interest in supporting us, and also that it's okay not to have all the answers, but to actually seek out for help. That is something that is very important for us to be able to teach our children that you don't have to do all the heavy lifting by yourself. So uh, do that. Make sure you connect with her. Uh, also, if you haven't already done so, connect with us by clicking subscribe so you get notifications on all the experts that come here sharing their expertise, gifts, and passions with you like Efrat has done. Uh, and um, so we can basically stay in contact. Efrat, before we finish, any final words for our audience members? Just be who you are and don't give up on that. No matter what uh, external cultural society uh, events uh, try to convince you otherwise, walk your essence, allow yourself to be the beauty that you are. If we all do that, the world will look different. Wow. 
Beautifully and well said. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Efrat, thank you again for being here and taking time thank to uh, have this interview. And we look forward to further collaborations. Cheers. Same. Bye, guys. Thank you.